Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics Advanced Media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. We've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic relocation, third edition by Joel Skousen. When disaster strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe, used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. We've got it. The transmission is coming to you. Waging war on corruption. All right, you are go. It's Alex Jones coming to you live from the front lines right, of the info war. Talk show host, best-selling author, Stefan Molyneux is in studio with us. Over this into the next hour. Your phone calls are coming up in the next segment, I promise, for folks that have been holding, like Steve and Dave and Fred and Todd and Robert. We'll get to all of you. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. I really do want to cover a whole swath of things with our uh, informed guest here today and, and pick his brain on everything from Bitcoin to the attack on the Second Amendment and free speech and how that's now intersected with Bloomberg wanting to uh, censor pro-gun uh, Second Amendment defense online. And this is just unprecedented, uh, really criminal uh, level larceny going after our basic rights. I mean, we should all just be burning with 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 anger. Uh, but 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 the, I guess the tyrants have gotten us where we're used to being run over by them. It's just it's 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 like deer in the headlights. I'm dumbfounded now by how arrogant they are. But but it is good to see the awakening happening. But Stefan, before I segue off into a bunch of my questions, uh, what are some points you haven't gotten to yet? Well, actually, let's let's lobby it back to you, Alex. Um, how do you feel about the departure of dear Piers Morgan from the fair shores of the United States? Uh, is do I need a Kleenex for you with a tear in your eye with great sorrow to see the uh, anti-gun advocate uh, exit the uh, the scene? In a way, I am sad because him talking down his nose at everybody and being arrogant and 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 basically saying you know Americans were all running around with coonskin caps backfired he 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 didn't implode he imploded day one he never succeeded he effectively wasn't on the air anymore mm. 
He took 2 million viewers every night and had it down to 380,000 when he left. And it's the same for MSNBC. They're all in free fall. So I ask you the question. I mean, uh, maybe zombies are real. I always thought it was medically impossible. This you have zombie banks. This is zombie media. Well, look, I mean, the, the gun thing is tricky. Uh, and, and it's not tricky because the facts aren't on the side of the First Amendment rights, uh, Second Amendment rights guys. It's just tricky because people see a gun and they think violence. They don't think protection. Sure, I, mean, I get people it. People see a cop with a gun and they think protection. But they see a private citizen with a gun and the less intelligent among us are like, ooh, that's violence. Hollywood's told them that. Yeah, and, and so the idea that guns prevent crime is kind of confusing to people. Uh, and, you know, it's like you exercise and you feel tired. It's like, well, how is this supposed to make me feel stronger? It's like you make you feel tired. So for people who just live on the surface and say, oh, there's a gun, that must mean there's crime, as opposed to the idea that guns prevent, what, uh, millions of crimes? Oh, no, it's year. unbelievable. But but what you don't see, people have a tough time with, right? 40 plus crimes are stopped, FBI's own numbers. They don't like to advertise for every time it's used in a crime. Right, right. And they, they say, well, you know, you're, you're more in danger of shooting yourself with a gun and all that kind of stuff. It's like, I think this is, statistically, this is all very false. It's well, it's like saying you can't have a car, you might get killed with it. I right. mean, nothing's safe. Right, so there is this weird, dumb thinking where if you get rid of guns, you get rid of violence, uh, which is, again, it's just not true. It's like, you know, then why don't people say, well, let's get rid of police and we'll get rid of arrests and we'll get rid of jails and then there'll be no violence. Because nobody is fundamentally against guns. What they are for, the anti-gun people, what they're for is for guns to be centralized in the hands of the elite. They are for the guns being centralized in the hands of the cops. Because if you have anti-gun laws, cops with guns need to go around to people's houses and take those guns away. Nobody, Which is now happening in Connecticut and California. And nobody, this is one thing to be really clear with anti-gun people, they're not anti-gun. They are very pro government guns. They're just anti-private citizens guns, which is always something that happens. That's right. It's the ultimate form of discrimination. Yeah. They've got, that's why they obsess on religion and, and race and sexual preference, because they don't care about all that. Yeah. But when it comes to foreign banks getting bailouts, when it comes to them being exempt, diplomatic immunity, they have bodyguards, we don't. They're, they're flaming hypocrites. Yeah, why don't you get the Secret Service to stop having guns if not having guns around prevents crime? It's like, I mean, they spend so much money protecting the president with massive amounts of military force. And then for private citizens, you can't have protection. But they love it. They love it when you don't have private protection. Why? Well, you know why. Because then you're dependent on the government for protection, which will never come. Look what's happening to Detroit. It takes an hour or two to get someone to come by after a 9-11 And call. the police chief said, buy a gun. Yeah, and, and basically they're there to identify your body if you're, you know, unlucky. So the government is continually breaking your leg and saying, then giving you a crutch and saying, see, without me, you couldn't even walk. And this is what they do. They want to take away your protection the same way they want to take away your capacity to create your own job. So then you're dependent upon the government providing you minimum wage security and all that kind of stuff. They want to take away your capacity to save so you're dependent upon them for old age pensions. And then they even write white papers like Cloward and Pivot admitting it. Yep. Uh, absolutely. The creation of a dependent underclass is one of the most savage aspects of late model democracy. Uh, and it's it's resisted to some degree by the Republicans, but it is avidly pursued by the Democrats. And now, of course, they want to make you dependent on the government for your health care. One of the most sensitive, difficult, emotionally draining and unstable things that happens. They're going to keep breaking the system until they say, look, we have to take it over. It's so broken. And by the way, you said that and everybody else said that because we know how they operate in other countries. It's not like it's not like this is the first time they've done this. We, we watch them over and over again. And then even Ezekiel Emanuel comes out and says, yeah, we're trying to wreck the health care system right now. I mean, if I was trying to wreck a fire department, I should be thrown in jail if I wanted to burn down the fire department. He wants to burn down the health care system, destroy our, our, and then he's a hero. And he admits it on Fox News. It's terrorism. <laughs> it's terrorism. You know, it, by any rational definition, uh, it is terrorism. That's right. He's a terrorist. Yeah, you are, you are destroying the lifeline for human beings to survive illnesses. Uh, and you are making them dependent upon a system. Now... At the beginning, this is this happened in Canada, which nationalized health care a generation or two ago. Now, the first generation gets it pretty good because the doctors all grew up in that system in the remnants of the free market. They used to do in-house calls. They're used to being really good at serving. Their They're family. honorable. Yeah, that doesn't just change. It's a ghost in the machine. It yeah. kind of. And then it takes a while for that echo effect to fade away. And then the next generation of doctors who come in who never faced any free market restrictions or never had to do customer service and they basically get paid by the government for ignoring their patients. The second generation is where it really, really gets hit hard. And that's what happened in Canada as well. First generation. Yeah, doctors still working hard. They're still caring about that. But you don't suddenly stop caring because the government takes over. But the next generation of doctors, you know, it's like the first generation of the NASA engineers did some great stuff. 
you know, what have they done over the last 30 years? They've just kept photocopying the space shuttle and calling it progress. And they, you know, so this is one thing that is an illusion that when you take something over and you've got some free market remnants, it actually works relatively okay and it slowly goes out of focus over time. Then the next generation, as is so often the case with the government, gets really hosed uh, with, with debt and a completely dysfunctional system. I mean, when they first privatized the, the educational system, the teachers didn't wake up not caring anymore, right? But a generation or two later, when you can no longer get fired and everyone's just going in there to hide out from any made it public, the free yeah. market, yeah, then, then it gets worse and worse and worse. But that, by then, the system is too embedded to undo with anything short of a revolution. At least, I mean, sort of a verbal revolution, a, a revolution in And market. no one could deny it. Look at all the numbers. I mean, the metrics, the, the, the lowering test scores, the physically lowering IQ, the obesity, the, the cancer rates, the, the saving rates. I mean, we every gauge... The West is in free fall. And the problem is you look at everywhere else, they've they've never even gone up to the heights to fall. I mean, it's a bad what do you expect if we don't get the new Renaissance going? An absolute new dark age? I mean, this is a pretty bad situation. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I you know, the, the one thing that is so frustrating, uh, you know, as a, a former technology entrepreneur and executive, one thing that's so frustrating, Alex, is that the, the remnants of the free market keep creating all of these incredible things. You know, like cell phones where you can video around the world, you know, when you're on a data plan for virtually for free. Uh, so, you know, and all of this stuff that is so incredible, the human productivity, human connectivity. You know, we have the new Gutenberg Press, as you and I talked about in a show before, which allows us to communicate the greatest ideas with no gatekeepers, no people in the way between people who've got great ideas and people who can receive them. You don't have to pass through the censorious filter. Yeah, we're not saying the technology is bad. It's just that Sauron's trying to put yeah. his will uh, into the computers. Yeah. Go ahead. The government keeps taking it over. And, and that which was designed to facilitate communication and spread ideas is now being used to control. Well, it's like you it's said, the paradox. It's yeah. true, historically. A freer country creates so much wealth, everyone's bathing in luxury. Then the kids become spoiled. They don't appreciate it. Decadence comes in. Tyranny comes in. How do you get by that cycle? By having huge human goals that, that, that we individually believe in, so collectively carry out? Well, you, you, my, my argument is that you have to rethink all the basic human institutions that we have inherited from history. Everything that is inherited is open to question. You know, we did this with slavery in the West, right? I mean, the, the Western European Christian culture fought. We ended it, so we get blamed with it. Yeah, of course, naturally, right? I mean, nobody's going to the Muslims for reparations. They had a far harsher slave trade than the West ever Well, it's did. going on right now. Yeah, and only 5% of the slaves in the Atlantic trade ended up in America, which, you know, it doesn't justify the institution, but it certainly means that if you're going to look for scapegoats for slavery, you don't start with America. But what happens is every institution, now we've inherited this centralized collective violent monopoly called the state. I think we need to open it up to question. Is this the best way to organize society? Do we really want to get stuck in this continual cycle where the government lets you have some freedom, you generate some wealth, the government takes that wealth and uses it to expand itself at your expense and eventually kills the goose that lays the golden egg. This cycle has been around since ancient Egypt, ancient Rome, ancient Greece, uh, modern, uh, the modern British Empire, German Empire, Austria, Hungarian Empire. It's the same thing, a little bit of freedom. Make some money. Government taxes grows into a um, uh, an empire. They become arrogant, disconnected, yeah. and, and then there's this. You you kill the remnants of the free market. Where, where, where is America down now? They went down like five or six points in the economic free. Oh yeah, well there's like scores of countries ahead of us now. Yeah, and in, and in freedom of the press and everything, we're going down. But on the plus side, the mainstream media appears to be having a good internet stake being driven through its heart, which I think is a glorious end to a ghastly beast. And, and that brings me to my next point. They will then respond by trying to censor. And there's moves, and I'll let you deny man-made global warming. Bloomberg moves to ban pro-gun speech. Facebook now working with a former uh, New York mayor to censor support for the Second Amendment. And it goes to these anti-gun sites where they're in talks and admit he's funding it to not let pro-Second Amendment speech be on Facebook, and they can have bots that block it. We've already seen our pro-gun memes being yeah. blocked. People go, well, that's their own, they own that site. They advertised it as a commons. Yes. They, ad they, they built it on our material, like YouTube, and then now they're clearly, in, I mean, this we is... Don't, we don't know what they're being threatened with behind the scenes. I mean, I, I can't imagine that... I'm just Facebook saying that's guys, outrageous. Yeah. No, it is. Now Bloomberg wants to get rid of free speech. That's the beauty of it, though. Son of you a know, bitch. They only, shoot at the, they only shoot at the airplanes over the target, right? When you get close to the target, that's when you get the anti -aircraft. Oh, we're kicking their butt. Yeah. So the fact that, I mean, you know you're achieving something when the powers that be don't like what you're doing. You know, you know a drug works on an illness when the illness, if it were conscious, would hate that drug, right? So the fact that, that there's outrage and, and frustration and counterattacks...